Dear colleagues, I'm happy to present you the CRISI technique, the combined radial incision and steroid injection for refractory anastomotic stenosis after a post surgery in Hirschsprung disease, which is an innovative conservative treatment. I have nothing to disclose. First, a quick introduction of eligible patients. We report the use of crisis technique on patients who undergo a laparoscopic assisted Svensson pull through. They presented an anastomotic stenosis, which was defined as obstructive symptoms after pull through, confirmed upon anal examination, and requirement of rectal irrigation. All the patients underwent serial dilatation in the clinic with no improvement after two months. At this moment, they became eligible patients for crisis technique. Before performing CRISI, we checked all the pathology report of the primary surgery to exclude a transitional zone pulse and we also performed a contrast enema, which was a good way to assess the stenosis lens and to rule out complications such as twisted pulse -through. The CRISI technique can be performed under a short general anesthesia. The patient is on gynecological position, as you can see in this picture, and we perform a perioperative antibiotic prophylaxis by one shot of IV metronidazole. You can see the list of the equipment that you will need, which include a gardelator to do a calibration of the anastomosis before and after crisis, the Lone Star Retractor to expose the stenosis. You will also need a good light. To perform the radial incision, you will need a monopolar electrocutary device, and to perform the injection, you will need a 5 ml syringe and a 21 gauge needle. The first step of crisis technique is radial incision. A calibration of the anastomosis is performed before the procedure with a negar dilator to assess the efficacy between the beginning and the end of the procedure. The stenosis is exposed, placing a lone star retractor on the perianal skin, as you can see on this slide. The radial incision is performed with a monopolar electrocutary device on three localizations. Two o'clock, six o'clock, and ten o'clock. No incision is performed on 12 o'clock zone in order to avoid urethral injuries. The second step is steroid injection. The steroid injection is performed to avoid fibrosis and retraction of the incision during scarring. The needle should be inserted with a 45 degree angle and we perform a 1 milliliter injection on each quadrant corresponding to a 10 milligram injection per quadrant. Finally, we do a last calibration with a negar dilator to assess the difference on caliber of the anastomosis. This procedure is a fast track one. The patient can eat and drink after the procedure and it can be discharged the same day or the day after. No rectal irrigation should be performed for 48 hours and the patient is seen 10 days after the procedure on calibration consultation. Here is a quick presentation of our results. We performed the crisis technique on four patients. They all had a rectosigmoid type of Hirschsprung disease, and the median age at pull through surgery was 2.5 months. Two patients presented an early stenosis with a median delay of one month after pull through surgery. They both presented a 2.5 cm stenosis that we could assess on a contrast enema. They underwent crisis four months after pull through surgery. At the calibration consultation, they both presented a clinical improvement, but the anal examination revealed the persistence of a fibrous ring of the anastomosis for the two patients. The patient too still needed rectal irrigation, so we decided to perform a second crisis procedure for the two patients. The two other patients presented a delayed stenosis with a median delay of 27 months after post surgery. The anal examination and the contrast enema both confirmed a short stenosis corresponding to a fibrous ring. We performed the crisis procedure with a median delay of 29 months after pull through. With a median follow up of 29 months, three of our four patients presented a satisfying long term results corresponding to the absence of obstructive symptoms, no stenosis upon anal examination, and no need for rectal irrigation. Those three patients avoid a radial pull through. One patient was still needed rectal irrigations after two crisis procedure, so he underwent a radio pulse that has also been complicated by an anastomotic stenosis. To conclude, the crisis technique is an innovative conservative treatment of refractory anastomotic stenosis after pull through surgery in Hirschsprung disease. In our series, 75 of the patients avoid a radio pulse through. We present a pilot study with a low level of evidence and a larger cohort is needed to confirm these results.